So hi, my name is Mark Bostock. Um, I work at Cloudflare. I'm a, a systems reliability engineer there. Um, I also run the Prometheus Meetup in London. Um, so we're always looking for speakers. If you're interested in talking, you're passing by London, please get in touch. Um, you can search for the Meetup group on meetup.com. Um, so I work at Cloudflare. We're a, a web security and performance company. Um, we have uh, locations, uh, about 86 different locations, and this is increasing all the time. Um, across the world, and we're uh, planning on putting a Prometheus instance in each uh, location. Um, we're uh, still starting out with that, and we're also hiring, so if you're interested in helping out and getting involved, uh, please let me know. So, <clears throat> um, I'm going to talk about a, a personal project I tried, um, which was uh, basically a toy exporter. Um, and basically, I was interested in uh, real user monitoring, um, where you collect uh, data about uh, page load times, for example, from real user requests. And often this is a callback that goes to um, uh, an event store, um, and it allows you to see um, how real user requests are performing. And you can get this kind of service from Pingdom, uh, New Relic, that kind of thing. Um, and I was interested, like, how could you do something similar in Prometheus? And I decided I, I didn't want to um, track real user, um, real user requests, because you need an event store, and that's quite complicated. But I, I was looking and see what, what could I do with, uh, say, a synthetic probe. So I started looking at the um, Navigation Timings API, um, which is uh, it's a W3 spec. And it basically allows you to um, get these metrics about uh, page load times, how long it took to connect. Uh, so th th these are from the perspective of a, a browser. So how long did it take for the DOM to load? And these are all um, uh, stored in the, uh, using the Unix epoch. So you can subtract one from the other and get a timeline of um, how the page looked. If you've ever used the, the network view, uh, when you use Chrome DevTools, um, you, this is basically uh, what that uses. Um, so, okay, so I mean, I'm not a JavaScript expert, but I had a look, and how, how can I get this information? Well, you can, you can run this query in the console, and you can kind of get these numbers. And I thought, well, how can I get this into Prometheus? Um, and I remembered, well, I, I have this little pro uh, web application I wrote in Go um, a, a couple of years back, and um, I, I wanted to write some acceptance tests for it. I never actually completed them, but I thought one of the things that would be fun was to do some accept acceptance tests from, uh, from a browser's point of view. So I used this library called Aguti, uh, which uses uh, the WebDriver protocol, which is another W3 spec. If you've ever used Selenium, it's, it's basically a, a way of driving uh, a browser, and there, there are multiple... Um, there are multiple browsers that are now supported, so you can use the Chrome driver, um, for example, which uh, provides you with a, basically a headless uh, Chrome browser. So yeah, the Aguti library is great. It's uh, designed to work with uh, Gink Go, which is a Go testing framework, but you can also use it as a standalone library. It's fantastic, um, and the developers uh, are really responsive. Um, it's also really, really well documented. So I'd already used this previously, so I thought, well, maybe I can use this to try and get these, uh, these timing metrics out of, out of the browser. So what I came up with is the WebDriver exporter, um, which is a bit like the black box exporter, but it creates a, a browser session and uh, sends a synthetic probe to an endpoint and then provides the timing. So if I want to probe Prometheus.io right now, if I just click this. And so we get all the metrics that we just saw in the console, but in, a, in an exporter. And they're all based on the Unix epoch, so you, again, you can subtract one from the other, and I'm just providing basically the raw data, so it's quite flexible what you can do with it. Um, it's also counting um, JavaScript warnings, so if you want to just check a page and see if there are any JavaScript errors, um, it provides that as well. And so I think there's maybe an issue, because at the moment what I'm doing is uh, stopping uh, the browser session and starting it on each uh, probe, and the reason for that is I want to make sure like I have a clean cache and that kind of thing. It's probably a more efficient way of doing that. So at the moment, there's quite a lot of like, spikes. Um, and I'm not sure if that's an issue or whether it's just normal. Uh, but basically, this is showing like the, the full end-to-end -end page load time. And that's basically it. Uh, so the, uh, it's on GitHub. So anyone can uh, see it. There's a link here. So yeah, uh, I'm not using it in production or anything. It's kind of a toy. But if you find it useful, uh, please let me know, because um, I'd be keen to keep improving it if people do find it useful. Um, thank you very much. Thanks.